<laughs> you know what? He he probably um expedited some stuff. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Breaking news. I just wanted to uh report something to you this morning. And that is um that Elijah Cummings, a senior Democrat who was a key player in the Trump impeachment inquiry, has died at age 68. Cummings, who chaired the House Oversight and Reform Committee, passed away at Baltimore John Hopkins Hospital at 2.45 a.m. on Thursday morning, the office said. The 13-term representative from Maryland, who has been in office since 1996, died of complications concerning long-standing health challenges. His death comes two years after he had surgery to repair his aortic valve and a month after he was admitted to a hospital for further treatment. Um, and you can bet, that's what I was saying, that Donald Trump and all his fiasco didn't make stuff no better. That's why um, whew, he is survived by his wife, Maya Rocky Moore who he married in 2008, and his three children, including daughters Jennifer and Adia. Congressman Cummings was an honorable man who proudly served his district and his nation with dignity, integrity, compassion, and humility, Rocky Moore said. He worked until his last breath because he believed our democracy was the highest and the best expression of our collective humanity and that our nation's diversity was our promise. Uh, was our promise and not our problem. I wonder if his boy, uh, what's his name? The one that said he was one of his best friends. We lost a giant today, Congressman. Elijah Cummings was a fearless protector of democracy and a fighter for the people of Maryland. Our world is dimmer without it. California Senator and Democratic Presidential hopeful uh, Kamala Harris paid tribute to Cummings on Twitter writing, we lost a giant today. Congressman Elijah Cummings was a fearless leader, a protector of democracy, and a fighter for people of Maryland. Steve Cohen, Tennessee, echo Cummings' powerful words, writing on Twitter, a giant of integrity and knowledge has fallen. He defended the Constitution with grace. Um, he, his decline in health meant that he had been using a wheelchair to get around Washington and use a walker in order to stand. When he was admitted to John Hospital uh, Hopkins, I mean to the hospital early in September, Cummins predicted that he would be back in Washington within a week. A sharecropper's son, Cummins became a powerful chairman of a U.S. House committee that spearheaded investigation into Donald Trump. He was a formidable orator and who passionately advocated for the poor in his district. That M. Com Compass a large portion of Baltimore. As chairman of the Oversight and Reform Committee, Cummings led a multiple investigation into Trump's governmental dealings, including attempts to get a hold of his tax returns. The investigation angered the president, who went on personally to attack Cummings in July when he criticized conditions in detention centers at the U.S. South border. The outraged president defended the border detention centers as clean, efficient, and run well, just very crowded, and then claimed the facilities are superior to Cummings' own district in Maryland. Cummings, he didn't say, he should have said his own, his, his son-in-law's apartment buildings in Baltimore. That's always under scrutiny and always under um, violation and health codes, but anyway, I digress. Cummings District is disgusting rat and rodent infested mess. He spent more time in, if he spent more time in Baltimore, maybe he could help clean up this very dangerous and filthy place. Why is so much money sent to the Elijah Cummins district when it is considered the worst run and the most dangerous anywhere in the United States? He said in another tweet. Ain't that sick? Um, um rest in peace, brother. No human being will want to live there. Where's all the money going? How much is stolen? Investigate this corrupt mess immediately. Cummins responded that government officials must stop making hateful incendiary comments that only serve to divide and distract the nation from its real problems. 
those in the highest levels of government must stop invoking fear, using racist language, and encouraging irreversible behavior, Cummins said in a speech at the National Press Club. Despite his feud with Trump, the pair only had one face-to-face -face meeting, according to the Baltimore Sun. That meeting came in 2017 when Cummings was working with Trump on a plan to lower drug prices. Cummings told the president, Very soon you and I will be dancing with the angels. The thing that you and I need to do is figure out what we can do. What present can we bring to a generation unborn? Uh, see, that's a human, human being for you. That's not a narcissistic personality. You, you can't deal with, I mean, they don't have that compassion, that empathy. Oversight Committee as the main investigative committee of the House was one of six involved in the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump and was spearheading efforts to gather evidence alongside the Intelligence Committee. Cummings' long career spanned decades in Maryland politics. He rose through the ranks of the Maryland House and delegates before winning his congressional seat in a special election in 1996 to replace Representative Kwaise Ofume who left the seat to lead the NAACP. Cummings was an early supporter of Barack Obama's presidential bid in 2008, and by 2016, Cummings was a senior Democrat in the House Benghazi Committee, which he said, which he said was nothing more than a taxpayer-funded effort to bring harm to Hillary Clinton's campaign for the president. Throughout his career, Cummings used very fiery voice to highlight the struggles and needs of the inner city residents. He was a firm believer in such in some of the much debated approaches to help poor addicted such as needle exchange programs and a way to reduce the spread of AIDS. His constituents began mourning early after his death on Thursday. The Baltimore Archdiocese tweeted that Cummins generously shared his God-given gifts and talents with people of his beloved city, state, and nation. For so many years, and we give thanks for his dedicated service and pray for the repose of his soul. Well, you know, like I said, uh, anyway, he was born in January 18, uh, 1951, only a few years older than me. Wow. Uh, the grade, in grade school, a counselor told Cummings he was too slow to to learn and spoke poorly and he would never fulfill his dream of becoming a lawyer. I was devastated, Cummins told the Associated Press in 1996, shortly before he won his seat in Congress. My whole life changed. I became very determined. Um, uh, wow, 10 years older than me. That's not, he, I mean, anyway, he's still, he's still coming to prove the counselor wrong. It's still coming to prove that counselor wrong. He became not only a lawyer, but one of the most powerful orators in the state house, where he entered office in 1983. He rose to become the first black house speaker pro term, and he began his comments slowly developing his theme and raising the emotional heat until it became like a sermon in the pulpit. Wow, that's you see there, some these these white folks always trying to break some student spirits. I mean that is incredible, but you could either take that kind of information, you know, two ways. You can use it to let it deflate you, or you can take it and let it propel you into doing something great, and which is what he did. Because back in my day, teachers would always say insulting things to um, break your spirit. And you had to navigate through that. And a lot of, a lot of us didn't. A lot of us couldn't. A lot of us were, weren't strong enough. Cummings was quick to note that the differences between Congress and the Maryland General Assembly, which has long been controlled by Democrats. After coming from the state where basically you had a lot of people working together, it's clear that the lines were drawn here, Cummings said, about one month being in Washington in 1996. Cummings chaired the Congressional Black Caucus from 2203 to 2204, employing a hard-charging explore-every-option style to put the group in the national spotlight. 
He cruised to big victories in an overwhelmingly district, Democratic district, which had given Maryland his first black congressman in 1970 when Perrin Mitchell was elected. So with that, we'd like to say, rest in peace, brother. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Um, and I take no joy in your passing. It's nothing political. You are a human being, and you deserve respect, and you deserve um, honor in your service to this country as a civil servant. And for that, I say rest in peace.